This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to help you create the website that you need. Stardew Valley is personally my favorite game of all time. I have sunk countless hours into this game, just making farms, doing farm things, you know? But something that I've been getting into as I continue to replay Stardew is incorporating little challenges into my playthroughs. I'm also super inspired by the countless YouTubers that do 100 day challenges. And I thought, hey, I wanna try that too. Now, I am no wickety. I am not a poxio. I am not a shawnee do. I don't play super efficiently, hardly at all. If they are the Stardew Valley pros, I am in the minor leagues. But I would really, really like to challenge myself to do a 100 days in Stardew Valley video with the following goals. My first goal, I would like to complete the community center as fast as possible. This is the game's first main goal and I've done it under a year several times, but never actually before winter has started. I'd like to get it done sometime in the fall. Secondly, I would love to make 1 million gold within the 100 days and I would like to max out all of my skills. Now. This is where it gets crazy, guys. I am super inspired by Wickedy's 100 day playthrough where they got all seven star drops. I have never done this before ever in the entire time that I have played Stardew Valley. You can obtain all seven star drops by doing the following. Number one, reaching floor 100 in the mines. Number two, giving old master cannoli in the secret woods a sweet gem berry. There are two available for sale, one at the Stardew Valley fair and one in Robus' sewer shop. The fifth star drop is from reaching maximum hearts with your spouse, 12 and a half. I think that's maximum, I don't know. Max hearts or 12 and a half. Number six is from catching every single fish in the game. This is also going to require us unlocking quite a few things on Ginger Island too. Originally, I was going to also try to get into the walnut room before the 100 days, but then I was like, I think I'm being a little too ambitious with things that I still have never done before. So yeah, I don't know. I took that off my list. And lastly, this is probably the hardest one. The seventh star drop is from donating all 95 items to the museum. So here's where I'm at right now in my life. I have never ever married anybody within the first year of a playthrough before. And I most definitely have never given every item to the museum. So we'll see. I'm gonna try to look up guides. I'm gonna watch the pros go at it and see what I can do myself. I'm terrified, but I am so ready. Have you ever thought about making a website? You could be an artist, a photographer, a filmmaker, any type of creative really, and you could be in need of a portfolio to show off your work. You could be a small business looking to sell product online, a restaurant needing a place to put your menu, a content creator, a blogger, etc, etc, etc. Websites are a great way to get information out there, of course. And Squarespace can help you do just that. Their incredibly user-friendly website builder allows you to get it done easily. They have all sorts of beautiful templates to help you design exactly what you need. My website is pretty cute, if I do say so myself. I have my stream embedded, all of my Animal Crossing codes, my Stardew Valley mods. I can link to all of my socials and my videos. And I mean, most important of all, I feel super special because I have a website. If you're interested in checking out Squarespace, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash list the last, or you can just use code list the last to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and just being so great. As I was creating my character, I made a few decisions that will impact this playthrough. Firstly, I decided to go with the regular, regular, standard farm layout. In the settings tab, I selected the guarantee year one completion option to ensure that I would, at some point, be able to obtain a red cabbage seed for the community center bundles. I also checked the box to spawn monsters on the farm because it kind of spices things up a little bit. One quick note about mods, you'll see that I'm going to be using some aesthetic mods and some mods that are just like in general helpful. So if you're curious about any of the mods that I'm using, you can check out the link in my description. And with that, we are ready to start our 100 days challenge. As soon as I load in, there's a gift waiting for me from Daddy Lewis. 15 parsnip seeds. I, of course, plant these seeds and start walking around to introduce myself to the townsfolk. Luckily, I have an idea of people's schedules, but 
by no means do I have it actually memorized. So I did miss a few people, namely Leah and Sam. I never marry them anyways. I'll get around to Willy and the wizard some other day, but with the 500 gold I started out with, I bought a few green bean seeds and planted them on the farm. And since I already ran out of inventory space today, I had to chop a few trees and craft a chest for storage. And that pretty much concludes day one, somewhat uneventful. When I woke up on day two, I had a few letters waiting in my mailbox. One was from Pierre trying to shill his bigger backpack and the other from Willie asking to meet me at the dock. After I watered my baby crop field, I headed on over to meet with Willie, who gave me the bamboo pole. Since one of my goals for this 100 day challenge is to catch all the fish, I decided to get to fishing right away. I need to raise my fishing level very quickly to level 10 actually. You need to be level 10 to catch the legend, which is a spring exclusive. Hopefully we can find some food with fishing buffs so that we don't have to actually get to level 10, but you know what I mean. So once I got bored of that, I finally went to meet Leah and Sam, completed the meet everyone quest, and gave a shell to Sam to complete the subsequent gifting quest. I also got a fish from the trash can. I wish it was an octopus, but anyways, with the remaining energy I had, I cleared some more space in my farm and went to bed. While I was sleeping, I got level one fishing too. We are on the up and up. On day three, we were blessed with rain and we didn't have to water our crops. I wanted to take advantage of this rainy spring day and go for the shad, catfish, or eel. No luck on the catfish, but I got a ton of shaddies before I went to try and get some seeds from Pierre, but he was closed. So I went to the beach and went for the eel instead and got it on my very first try. I decided to use the rest of my time trying to get the catfish, but didn't have any luck on that still. I stored the fish that I would need for future bundles, sold the rest, and hit the sack and level two fishing. In the morning on day four, I went to harvest three little measly spring onions and then headed straight to Pierre's to buy some seeds. I got some of every seed available, more cauliflower than anything, and got to planting. Since I had some time left over, I walked up to the mountain and caught some fish that I'll need for the community center and went to bed because truthfully, I'm just kind of waiting to unlock the community center tomorrow. But then when I went to bed, I got level one foraging kind of neat. Big things happening today. We got a cat and of course named it after my own cat. My parsnips grew in and here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for, kind of. I went and talked to Lewis and finally got to enter the community center and see the little Junimos, but I can't start donating to them just yet. I have to wait for the wizard to summon me tomorrow, so I'll just fuck off for a bit, I guess. I donated my very first artifact to the museum, broke open my first geode, sold and planted a bunch of parsnips. Also, happy Friday. Guess what Friday is? Traveling cart day. Fortunately, there wasn't anything in the traveling cart inventory I felt like I needed to buy, so that's pretty unexciting. Since I was on this side of the map, I said hi to the hat mouse and headed to the saloon to give away the few gifts I had. I bought Shane a beer, even though my money situation is super tight. I don't know. I, I don't know why I did that, truthfully. I did say hi to everyone and went right home to clean up the farm a little before bed. In the night, I gained a farming level and gained the ability to craft a scarecrow, which I had to do right away to protect my little crappies, duh. But not before Clint comes over to give me the furnace blueprint. Thank you. Go away. After taking care of my crops, I walked over to the wizard's tower, tripped balls, I guess, with the wizard. Um, now I, I suppose I can read the Junimo language and all of that just to get access to the community center. I didn't know what all I could donate to the bundles, but I did bring everything I had, which was great because I unlocked the pantry and fishing bundles right away. I'm just doing vanilla bundles, so everything here is to be expected. Since I am level one farming, I am able to craft fertilizer, so I got a few parsnips, planted, fertilized. Hopefully we can get some gold star quality nips for the quality crops bundle. The days go by so slow in the beginning, so I used the little energy I had to clean up the farm and say hi to any townies I saw. I'm of course trying to build up friendship, but it could be a little hard, especially since I have hardly any gifts. I saw some sashimi and thought about buying it for Sebastian um, until I remembered I have the traveling cart tomorrow, so I gotta save my money. When I woke up the next day on day seven, I ran over 
to meet my sweet, sweet traveling cart lady, and there's nothing. I do kind of want the coffee bean, but I don't think I'll be able to make enough money before the end of the day to get one. We'll see, I guess. After cleaning up my farm, I had barely any energy left, but I still wanted to go to the mines, so I got whatever food I had and trekked on over. Marlin gave me a rusty sword. Like, really? You didn't have anything better? I only made it to level five before I decided to cut my losses. I was out of energy and wanted to save what food I had left for another excursion. I did get some cute green little booties, so big dub. I completed my first quest by bringing Haley a daffodil and gave Abigail an amethyst, one of her favorite gifts, and kind of just BS'd the rest of the day. Level one mining, let's freaking go. I use so much energy on watering my crops. It makes it hard to do anything else after I get my farm stuff done, so I figured it's time to craft a furnace and aim to upgrade the watering can soon, but I don't have enough copper. <sighs> I guess it's time to go down under. I got a bunch of copper during this trip and barely made it to level 15 by the skin of my teeth. I ran home and went to bed gaining a combat level in my sleep. It's raining again, so I don't have to water my stupid crops. I had a few parsnips grow in. These ones didn't have fertilizer, so my expectations weren't high, but I did get one gold quality parsnip from this batch. I put away the nips I wanted to donate to the community center and decided to go for the catfish again. I want to just get it out of the way if possible. After a few hours, I finally got it. It's a Christmas miracle. It was just before Pierre was going to close up shop, so I got some more parsnip seeds to replenish the ones I harvested today. Chop some trees to get sap to make fertilizer and took a few things over to the community center. I noticed that I had slain enough slimes to get into the adventurers guilds and thought I would just do that. It was cool. I slayed. Time to go home. Oh, and I got level three fishing too. On day 10, it was raining again, which is so exciting for me. I planned a full day in the mines and headed straight over after harvesting my crops. First thing first, I used a cherry bomb to blow up this rock and talk to the dwarf, kinda. I do not speak his language yet, so we can't understand each other, but someday. I only made it to level 20 today before I decided to go home. I must have had bad luck or something because to only make it down five levels in 12, plus hours. Yeah, okay, there's something fishy here. I just wasn't getting ladders, so that's unfortunate, but not the worst. When I got home, I made some more copper bars and checked the fortune on the TV and what you look at that? I was right. After I hit the sack, I gained levels in farming and mining, so that's not all bad. It is day 11. Now I am starting to really worry about catching the legend. I need to get level 10 fishing, probably with buffs from food in order to catch it, if I can find said food. I think that over the next few days, I should start really focusing on raising my fishing level so I don't screw myself. I was trying to read up on where the best spots to fish were based on how much experience, and it's kind of a toss up between the mountain lake and the ocean because I don't have access to the sewers. I'm going to try mountain lake and see how it goes. Before I do that, I'll sell anything I've harvested to buy a few cauliflower seeds and use the remaining gold to upgrade a tool. I decided to go with the pickaxe since I will be fishing over the next couple days. I do not think that I will be missing it. I spent a lot of time at the mountain lake and was thinking about how badly I need to upgrade my rod ASAP so I can use bait, but I was mostly just trying to get as many perfect catches and treasure chests as possible before heading to the saloon to see what kind of food was available today. I need to keep my eye out for any food that gives fishing buffs, even though I am dirt poor. On my way there, I got the Linus dumpster diving boomer George cutscene, gave Emily a diamond for whatever reason, I don't know why, put some fish aside for the community center and any future quests, sold the rest, planted some cauliflower, and went to bed. In my sleep, I gained a fishing level, putting us at level four. We need either level six fishing with seafoam pudding or level seven with some other fishing buff food options. There's quite a few, but that's also banking on us finding these foods. I'm praying to the traveling cart and Gus, please. We are on day 12 of spring now. Time to head over to the traveling cart and oh my God. When I tell you I screamed when I saw this, I scrumped literally. 880 is pretty steep, but I am truthfully so desperate that I will take it. I had a few things to sell and then I'm headed to the beach. I want to see how much rods are and fish all day. Unfortunately, I am now too poor for the fiberglass rod. Being able to use bait is going to help a lot with gaining fishing XP. I'll fish as much as I can before shop closes up and see how much money I make and rip. 
so close. Since it's Friday, I stopped by the saloon, checked the stock, and said hi to everyone, but when I went to bed, I was hit with a very hard decision. Fisher or Trapper. People say crab pots are great for fishing experience, but I also wouldn't mind making a little more money so I could focus on fishing 25% more, you know? I don't know. I'm not one to do the math and try to figure out the actual smartest way to play this, and I'm not really one who uses crab pots a lot in my regular playthroughs, so... I went Fisher. Sue me. On day 13, I woke up hoping that I didn't totally screw my game over, did some farm maintenance, and then planned to go get my fiberglass rod from Willy. Until I realized it's a festival day, so I won't be able to go to the beach. I decided to just go to the mountain lake and fish until it was time for the festival. Why do I always want to do important things on festival days? As long as I can enter the town before 2 p.m., I can still participate, which I want to do because I'm trying to have fun here. Some people would say, it's inefficient, but I just love eggs. I did get an iridium band from a treasure chest, which is pretty cool. And right before 2 p.m., I headed over. Of course, I spoke to everyone at the festival and then went on with the egg hunt, which I won. And I got a cool hat. Suck it, kids. When I went to bed, I gained a farming level, which is pretty neat. We are now halfway through spring. I still need to complete the spring crops bundle in the community center, just waiting on that cauliflower. I need to gain two fishing levels and have a rainy day before I can catch the legend, so I'm kind of shaking in my boots a little bit. I have caught every fish I need to for spring except the legend and have hearts with only a few people, but we're working on that. I'd like to marry Haley because she's best girl, but I'm really down for whoever is first. This day was pretty busy. I had quite a few crops come in, bought some more seeds, picked up my copper pickaxe. I was gonna head straight for the beach, but figured I would stop by the traveling cart instead in case I needed money to buy something there. And nada, nothing special, so I went and bought the fiberglass rod. I realized that I'm pretty close to unlocking the iridium rod, but I will probably get a fair amount of use out of the fiberglass one, simply because the iridium rod is so expensive and I do not have that kind of cheddar right now. And I'm honestly so glad I did. I caught easily twice as many fish as I would have without it and gained a fishing level, putting me at level six. I could go for the legend now if I had seafoam pudding, but I don't, so I'll need one more fishing level before I can attempt the legend with the help of my dish of the sea. On day 15 and 16, I mostly focused on fishing and some minimal farm stuff. I broke open a ton of geodes and donated quite a few items to the museum and completed the crab pot bundle without having set up a single crab pot. My reward for the crab pot bundle was crab pots. So I did put those puppies in the ocean and baited them up. I did also get a cauliflower on the 16th, which allowed me to complete the spring crops bundle. Just need those parsnips to come in so I can do the quality crops. We also unlocked the bulletin board bundle so we can start working on those contributions. But these two days were mostly dedicated to fishing. I fished my little fish heart out. If I don't get the legend on this save, I would be failing you all and myself. This is my grind baby. Luckily, the end of day 16 brought us a lot of hope. We reached level 7 fishing, so with my Dish of the Sea, it is possible for me to catch the legend. Now, we just wait for a rainy day. The next day was sunny, kind of a bummer. I decided to give Clint my axe to upgrade. I think I can live without it for a minute. I really debated on fishing again today just to see how high I can get my fishing level, but I want to dedicate at least a little time to mining. I'm going to need iron ore pretty soon here for tool upgrades, so let's make a little bit of progress today if we can. Before I went to the mines, I checked in with Gus and bought his trout soup. Who knows, maybe I'll need this. I wish buffs stacked, that would make me feel way less nervous, but they don't. I only made it a little over five levels down before I decided to dip out. I ran out of inventory space and figured I could do some light fishing before I run to bed. Overnight, we gained level two combat, pretty epic. No rain today and there will be no rain tomorrow. So I still have some time to prep for the legend if I want to and I kind of want to. I don't want to screw this up guys. If I can get to level nine, I can use my two trout soups and maybe that will increase my general odds of getting it. Can you tell I have anxiety? <laughs> but I did have a quality nip or two come in, allowing us to contribute to the quality crops bundle for the first 
Hi, that's a lot of stress off our shoulders. I spent the rest of the day fishing my life away at the beach and most definitely remembering that I have crab pots. I did get level four farming and a buttload of money once I went to bed. On day 19, I checked the weather forecast for tomorrow and no rain. Naturally, I am stressing. After tending to my crops, I trotted my little farmer butt over to the traveling car and what do you know? There's a red cabbage seed in there. Of course I bought it and then I contemplated on buying the coffee bean but decided it wasn't really worth it on Honestly, it's nice to be able to make coffee, but I really need to save money. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. My copper ax was ready and I broke open a few geodes, donated what I could, but ultimately this is another fishing day for me. This is truly the most fishing I've ever done in Stardew Valley, but I want to be as prepared as possible. If I can reach level nine, I will feel a lot better guys. So why not? Fishing is also making me a lot more money than I thought it would. On my way home, I stopped by the saloon, chatted everyone up, checked the stock and had a few minutes on my farm to fight some monsters and chop some trees. And we're at level eight fishing, baby. Let's freaking go. Talking to people is paying off a little, by the way, because I've gotten to one singular heart with a ton of townies. Instead of planting more crops or building a coop, I'm saving money to buy the iridium rod. I do have a little money, however, to upgrade my hoe first. There's no rain tomorrow, but I am super close to being able to purchase said rod. And so we've got yet another day dedicated to fishing. It really does make good money. I feel bad bad for being a fishing hater for so long. Those little treasure chests from fishing also give you really cool stuff too, like this ruby, which is going straight to Emily. I've been trying to work on foraging when I can. I'd love to get some lightning rods for next season. And also I need wood, but there's just too many damn bats on this farm. What is going on? Tomorrow? is the day. I'm so nervous. Demetrius, get out of here, I'm coping. I chose mushrooms, by the way. I just think they're way more useful. To prep for the big day, I must fish. I'm going to get my iridium rod, the trap bobber, because that's what the Redditors say was good for the legendary fishies, and fish until the cows come home. Except my dumb ass missed the traveling cart. Big regret. I'm already screwing stuff up, guys. I woke up, no rain tomorrow, so I really only got one shot maybe and ran over to the lake. Oh my God, I forgot the dish of the sea. Do I need the trout soup? I'm only level eight fishing. This is useless to me, but what if I do need it? Ugh, okay, let's take it anyways. I keep getting carps like crazy. What is going on? Oh my God, here it is. I'm so scared. Oh my God, this is really giving me a run for my money. Honestly, I, I think we're gonna do it. Uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Fuck the rest of day 20 to who gives a shit? I got the legend. Do I get rid of it or do I keep it? I don't know. I, I don't know what I want to do with it. I'd like to keep it to put it in an aquarium someday. Yeah, that's what I'll do. On my way over to pick up my copper hoe, that's what they used to call me in high school. I debated on whether or not to buy the backpack upgrade. More inventory slots would be amazing, but I'll wait just a bit longer. I have a fear of running out of money and I could really use a coupe. Ugh. We'll see. The perfect ending to this amazing day was to hang out in the mines. We really accomplished everything we needed to for spring. I, I can't believe it. The rest of spring was pretty mundane, so I'll give you some of the highlights. We returned Robin's lost ex, gave a cauliflower to Jody, and I did end up getting that backpack. For the remainder of spring, I spent a ton of time in the mines. I am embarrassed to admit that I did not have enough hearts to dance with anyone at the flower dance. I went anyways, and stood in the corner all emo and sad. I also did not buy the rare crow at the flower dance. It wasn't ever a part of my 100 day goals, but I'm sad I forgot to bring enough money to get it anyways. It would have been kind of cool to get all the rare crows regardless, but whatever. Maybe for the 200 days video, ah, wink wink. And of course we've contributed a bunch to the community center. Completed some bundles, unlocked the vault bundles, which is just loads and loads of cash donos, and completed our very first room, the boiler room. On spring 27, baby, let's go. And we even got mine carts. I did really have a moment of weakness when I saw this truffle at the traveling cart. Now I know I have a pretty good chance of getting a truffle before the beginning of winter, but I have been burned once before from a truffle. And so I bought it. Never again will I fail to complete the community center in the first year because of some freaking pigs. The last thing I really did before spring was over was upgrade my watering can to copper, which will hopefully make our lives a bit easier. And I got started on the construction of our very first coop, which truthfully could have happened a lot sooner. But with that, we move on to 
summer. With the start of summer comes some serious farm planning. I only have the measly four tile sprinkler unlocked, so I'll probably just skip sprinklers and plant a semi-manageable crop field. If I can even afford seeds, I need to for sure plant tomatoes, peppers, blueberries, and melons. And so I grabbed what seeds I could and planted all of them with fertilizer. Since I am so broke, I thought fishing would actually be a great moneymaker. Look at me, I'm changing. From a fishing hater to a fishing lover. Love those little guys. I caught quite a few new fish because it's summer now and donated to the community center before heading to bed. Our foraging and fishing level also increased. Nice. My coop is not yet done, so I spent all my money on seeds and got to plant it. And since I have no money and fishing is such a good money maker, I headed to the beach. There is a legendary fish that can only be caught on the Eastern dock, so I used 300 wood to unlock it and tried my luck. We got a bunch of new fish and eventually we did nail that crimson fish, putting us at two out of the five legendary fish caught. And that's pretty much all I did on day 30. The next day I woke up to the purple shorts quest in my DM, so we'll see how quickly I can get around to that. My coop is built though, so I got my very first coop animal, a chicken named Chickadee. I decided to build a silo and then um, the train and the spa area opened up? When did that happen? Okay, I guess. So now I have access to that. That's probably what that earthquake was in the night, I guess. I decided to hit the mines for the rest of the night and catch the ghost fish and the ice pip and spent the rest of my time grinding mine. On day 32, I tended to my farm, said hi to little chickadee, you know, the huge. I used my tiny baby amount of money to buy seeds and again went out fishing to make some money. By the way, I do have the walkthrough trellis mod because fuck that. I just want to plant the hops like a normal crop. Forgive me, please. Um, I accidentally caught a sturgeon? Wait, why did I think this was only available in the rain? Oh, okay. Well, I guess not. Heck yeah. Well, I'm stoked on that. The next day my silo was built so I can start cutting grass if I really need to. I do have the more grass mod and I didn't realize until I got like pretty far into this that I still had the animals don't eat grass mod in. So apologies, I feel like that's kind of borderline cheating. The traveling car didn't have anything interesting really, but I don't even have money anyways, so. I had some spare gems lying around to give as gifts, but I really want to upgrade my ax ASAP so I can get in the secret woods. I decided to sell some diamonds to get that upgrade started and broke up some geodes for the museum. And then I was able to complete the summer foraging bundle. It only took five days to find a grape. My first crop finally came in, the hot pepper. So I can finally start making some money on my crops. I would put them in preserves jars and such, but I truthfully don't have any wood. So I'm just going to sell them right out. I'm really actually missing my ax right about now. I also started thinking about how my foraging level is pretty low. I'd like to get it up to level six so I can craft lightning rods and take advantage of these summer thunderstorms. But instead, day 34 is spent fishing and really doing nothing else. I already feel like I'm so behind and I could be doing so much more. On day 35, I woke up to a storm and checked my TV, of course. Little Chickadee had two eggs in her coop, which is crazy because I didn't even know she was laying yet. I fed her and went to pick up my steel ax and headed straight for the secret woods. I stopped by the traveling cart, of course, and there wasn't anything I needed. I'll wait a few more weeks to buy the rare seed. I'd rather have the money right now. We finally got in the secret woods and there was one fiddlehead fern, so I grabbed it for the community center and fished for the secret woods exclusive wood skip. I then headed to the beach to get the red snapper and Willie told me he'd give me a prize if I caught all the fish, which don't worry, bud. I'm already on it. And then he alluded to his boat in the back and I'm like, pal, I'm on it. Anyways, I caught the red snappy and donated to the community center on my way home. On day 36, I had some radishes grow in and went to get another chicken, but Marnie decided to take the day off. <laughs> Super cool. I was like, okay, what do I do now? So I went to the beach to aim for the octopus or tilapia with only one and two hours left to catch those. No tackle and a dream. I said, fuck it, why not? And did didn't get either of them. One of these mornings, I have to make my way down there and actually try for those two because they're actually the last summer fish that I need. I've also started to grind foraging in the evenings. I did raise a farming and foraging level in my sleep and went with the gatherer profession. My poppies finally grew in. That will be a great gift for Penny and I needed one for the community center. I checked the time and was like, you know what? Let's go to the beach and get our last two fish. Just get it out of the way. The tilapia was easy, but the octopus did give 
give me a little bit of a hard time. I got it on my second try though, so maybe think twice before talking shit on my vision skills ever again. Tomorrow is the luau and I'm not really sure what to bring. I was skimming through the list of best responses and noticed there's a lot of fish on here. There's no way I'm giving up any of my legendaries, but I did notice that a gold quality ice pip would elicit the best response and I got one of those. That's great because it'll gain me 120 friendship with the townies, which I desperately need. I ran out of energy pretty quick this morning, so I decided to hit the spa and just work on my farm until the luau tomorrow. Oh, and I got a chicken named Hot Wing. Of course, the next day's luau was a smashing success, honey. The soup was perfect, and I got a lot of friendship points with the other villagers, so big dubs all around. Day 40, wowie, it is crop city out here. I had to replenish those crops and check the traveling cart. I'm just not super stoked on anything in here. I did decide to get the coffee bean for selfish reasons, left the duck feather because I figured it wouldn't be that hard to get one of those. Spoiler alert, it was and left the rare seed for another week. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful. George yelled at Penny, a train passed through Stardew Valley and didn't drop anything for me, and I worked on my epic foraging skills. The next day was rainy and thundery, which sucks because I still don't have a high enough foraging skill to craft lightning rods. I keep forgetting I have chickens, so I have a ton of eggs today. I still need to make some mayo machines. I chopped a little tree, went to the spa to replenish some energy, and headed to the mines for the rest of the day. When I went to bed, I gained a foraging level, so now I'm finally able to craft lightning rods and a combat level. Today was a huge community center day. We're halfway through summer. I have five gold quality melons and the rest of the summer crops donated. So now I've taken care of all the summer specific donations. The only thing I'm excluding here is the red cabbage. I'll be honest, I'm nervous to plant it in case it gets eaten by a bird or something. I would never forgive myself, truthfully. I know I'll have the greenhouse sooner than later, so I'm waiting on that for my red cabbage seed. I'm sorry, I just don't trust it. Traveling cart didn't have much, and um, I'm starting to give the wizard whenever I remember. Sold some produce, bought more seeds, donated to the community center, and upgraded my pickaxe. Also, my first heart event, I think? It's with Shane. He got all depressing and gave me a beer at the dock. I think this is my first one. I'm not sure. But hey, level seven farming. I'm trying to pull together enough money to make a barn, which is 6,000 gold. After a few trips to Pierre's, I had the funds and got that started. But mostly, I just moseyed around all day. I am nothing without my pickaxe. Whenever I have spare time like this, I'll try to give as many gifts as I can to the townies. I don't have a heart requirement for my 100 days challenge, but one of the seven star drops requires max hearts with a spouse, so I need to get wifed up pretty soon here. I was able to contribute a bunch to the community center on day 44, and my gift giving is really starting to pay off with all these love cutscenes too. I played a little video game game that I suck at with Abigail, got my pickaxe, planted more crops, and hit the mines. I've gotten real good at multitasking. I'm slinging gifts left and right. It was getting pretty late, so I had to stop at level 95, but if you think about it, we're just five levels away from our first star drop, and I gained a mining level. The next few days were pretty textbook. A few exciting things happened, like Haley and Emily's argument cutscene, and Emily's trippy dream one, too. I kind of just gave a bunch of gifts and did some work on my farm. There was a rainstorm and I finally got some lightning rods up to collect batteries, but apparently there was no thunder, so I got zero batteries. But made tons of crop money, honey. I used that crop money to buy my first cow named Moo Moo. I tried to make it to level 100 in the mines, but I showed up with no food, so yeah. Day 47 is a Friday, which is traveling cart day. The stock was interesting. I skipped the coconut and seafoam pudding because who needs it? And I got the rare seed just because I have a little extra cheddar right now. Obviously, I can't plant it until the fall, but at least I have it and don't have to worry about it. I was double checking my fish progress and noticed that some crab pot creatures were on my fishing list, and the ones I hadn't gotten yet were only found in fresh water. So, of course, I got some crab pots made and placed in fresh water. Let's hope I don't forget about them. I did forget bait though. Um, Anyways, I ended the night at the saloon and gave out a plethora of gifts. I love summer because sweet pea is a universal like and you can just find it on the ground. How neat. This morning I woke up to a quest from Demetrius asking for a melon. So I harvested some crops, checked on some crab pots, sold some stuff, and headed over. When I went to the beach, I had two events waiting for me. One where I tossed up some pig skin with my bro Alex, and another where Vincent and Sam talked about their dad being in the military or something, I don't know. I did some serious work on the 
farm too and started planning where I'm gonna put stuff rather than slapping shit down wherever I have room. We reached level eight farming, which means we can finally make some kegs. On day 49, I decided to impulsively upgrade my house. I had the money in the wood, what can I say? I will make sure I upgrade my animal situations ASAP. Money has been rolling in steadily. Let's just hope I didn't do this too soon. I did have money left over to buy an apple sapling, which I planted in a spot I'm not even sure about yet. Whatever. Anyways, I have to make sure I get the pomegranate before summer's over too for the community center. There was nothing in the traveling cart, so I decided it was time to get my very first star drop. It took me half a day to get five levels down because I must have had the worst luck ever, but damn, it feels good good to have one of seven star drops down. We are at the halfway point, folks. Here's a progress update for you. For the community center, crops are looking good. I'm almost done with quality crops. I just need like two more gold star corns, fall crops, of course. I'm waiting on animals for a lot of these bundles, truthfully. I need to keep up on that. We only have three more fish in the fish tank left. The vault is just money, of course. And the friendship bundles on the bulletin board are a load of random that I am confident we will get. The community center is the easy part. The hard part for me is going to be the star drops. The one that I am 100% concerned about is the museum star drop. How am I gonna find every single artifact? I feel like that's gotta be mostly luck, let's be real. I'll try to stay on it, but man, am I super nervous. My millionaire achievement is, um, far away, but my earnings are exponential at this point. I'm hoping we can make 1 million by the time we get to 100 days. Kegs will help with that too. Since I'm stressing about artifacts, why not go for the last dwarf scroll in the mines and maybe make it down a few more levels? Well, I tried my darndest. I gotta figure out a more efficient method, but I brought bombs and tilled my heart out and nothing, but that's fine. I made it to 110 and went home to level up my combat. I love getting towards the end of the season when you can't really plant anything because it's just so much less work. But hallelujah, we got our first milkies. I came to the realization that I need to really be working on getting married. So I gave a bunch of gifts out today to potential candidates. Honestly, I'm just gonna marry whoever I can first. I did get another Emily cutscene, so maybe that's a sign that she's the one. I don't know, guys, we'll see. I also bought the pomegranate sapling, which I'll need to grow and harvest for the community center. We started gathering hardwood today too, because I need 100 to build a stable. And I think it'll help us gather artifacts from dig spots if we can run around town faster. On day 52, I woke up in a way bigger house. Thanks for the speedy work, Miss Robin. I also had quite a few things to donate to the community center. The rest of summer went by smoothly. I did end up building a stable, living my horse girl fantasy right now. I named the horse Stomper. I did find another dwarf scroll, but then I was like, wait, what? This is the scroll I need? Like, okay. I was mistaken, but I'm not mad. Now I know Dwarvish and can talk to the dwarf in the mines. God is good. We did upgrade quite a few skills, donated to the community center a bit, and completed the chef's bundle, as well as the quality crops bundle. Let's freaking go. I got a new cow named Milkington, spent some money to upgrade my hoe, and made it to the bottom of the mines. The summer ended with me crafting an ass load of tea saplings, which is a great money hack, by the way. I was a non-believer, but those things are 500 gold a pop. So tomorrow we'll wake up with buco bucks, but tonight is for the moonlight jellies. Except I got there 30 minutes late and I totally missed it. I think this has to be a bad omen. It is grind time, baby. We have a lot to do today on day 57. Of course, we're going to plant all the fall crops, but focus mainly on planting crops that will get good profits, like cranberries. I almost have enough money to complete the vault bundles and unlock the desert, but I'm going to wait just a few more days for that because I need to use some of this money to make more money, you feel? I got started on my farm, but decided about halfway through watering that I wanted to get the tiger trout out of the way because I want to complete a bundle today to just kick off fall on the right foot. We also had tried out the treasure bobber because there's still a few fishing artifacts that I have yet to come across and anything helps at this point. But I fished for a few hours, didn't get any treasure chests, so... Just my luck, honestly. Don't worry though, I did get around to watering and tending to my animals before bed. You know, I'm just so responsible. I am so glad I have some sprinklers now. It's really making my life so much easier. I decided to dedicate this day to fishing with the goal of catching every fish I could, except the walleye because it needs to be raining. I unlocked the bulletin board, which I will 
probably never checked, so let's just move on. The fish I caught today were the sea cucumber, the angler, one of the legendary fish, the albacore, and lastly, the midnight carp. So now I just need to get the walleye and my fall fishing is done. Having a horse is amazing, by the way. I was able to hunt for so many artifact spots. It's so much more efficient. Collecting forageables too, ugh, it's great. We also got level 10 fishing, our first max skill. And of course I chose the double treasure reward because you know, we gotta get all the artifacts somehow. I just can't believe our first max skill is fishing. If you would have asked me while I was planning this video what my first max skill would be, fishing would have been at the bottom of my list. After tending to my farm, I donated a few things to the community center and completed the fall foraging bundle. The only thing stopping us from completing this room is the winter foraging now. I had some artifacts to give to the museum and I'm just a little bit closer to unlocking the sewers, which is great. I'm also trying to think of how to unlock the greenhouse sooner so I can complete the community center before winter starts if possible. Because the sooner we get to Ginger Island, the better. The only thing that would hold me back is the winter foraging because of the snow yam and the crocus. If I can get to the greenhouse sooner, I can plant winter seeds, which aren't that difficult to obtain, and the red cabbage planted before winter even starts. It could work, but I also have to be strategic with how I complete the pantry bundle I planted a singular pumpkin with deluxe speed grow and got started on upgrading my barn to get goats. I'm glad I saved my money instead of spending it on the desert bus. Time is really flying. We are on day 60 now. We started off the day by enabling Pam's alcoholism. I made quite a few more sprinklers and set up a recycling machine to start getting through some of this trash. Speaking of trash, I went for some minefish today, like the stonefish and lava eel to get all of the minefish out of the way. When I got the stonefish, I also got a treasure chest with a dinosaur egg in it. I'm honestly debating on whether or not to give this one to Gunther or wait to upgrade my coup, but truthfully, I cannot pass on an opportunity like this for the challenge's sake. I'll be giving it to Gunther tomorrow, but tonight was kind of an L because I didn't end up getting the lava eel, and I passed out five feet away from my house. On day 61, I was simply having a relaxing farm day until I realized I fucked up. I forgot to plant the sweet gem berry. The sweet gem berry that takes 24 days to grow? Yeah. Luckily, I have some deluxe speed grow, so we'll be okay, but oh my god. That was a close one. That could have been really bad for our star drop challenge, if it wasn't bad enough. I decided to buy a few things from the traveling cart that I really didn't need, but could potentially help us get the community center done quicker. I don't, I, again, I don't play this game the most efficiently. I do have a pretty accurate gut though, so hopefully I didn't just waste money. However, I'm doing fine with finances right now, so I don't really have to stress over it too hard. Friday ended at the saloon. I've been giving people gifts pretty consistently, and it looks like Emily might be the one we marry. We'll see. I tried again for the lava eel in the evening and had no luck because I didn't bring food and became exhausted pretty much immediately. I woke up on day 62 to Marnie asking for a cave carrot for her goats. And then I was like, wait, my barn is upgraded. I can get a goat now too. So I brought over the cave carrot, bought a goat and named it goaded, got Mayor Lewis's underwear, returned them to him and went for the lava eel again. Honestly, it worked out pretty good because I got a hit immediately. And even though it put up a tough fight, I got him in the end. Now we are officially done with the mine fish. We ended our night with some good old fashioned saloon gifting. Day 63, I woke up and grinded out some wood chopping so I could upgrade my coop. I have to start thinking about that rabbit's foot since since the traveling cart doesn't seem to want to give one to me. Traveling cart Sunday also means it's gift reset day. So I went around and gave gifts to some townies, got to flex my muscles for Haley, guzzled some brews with Smelly It, crafted some tea saplings, and hit the hay. On the 8th of fall, we got our very first rain. So what do we do? Go for the last fall fish we need, the walleye, of course. But I can't do that until noon. So I harvested a bunch of crops, found Linus basket, went blackberry picking, crafted and sold a bunch of tea saplings, and then caught my precious walleye. Now the only fish we have left for the community center bundle is the sandfish, which we can get either from the traveling cart or the desert. We have to fish for it anyways for the master angler achievement and the fishing star drop, but I'm not even remotely worried about it. The rest of the night, I just focused on my tea saplings and kept my mind money motivated. I stopped by the saloon to give Emily a gift and was bombarded 
by Clint's nice guy spiel. You know what? I might just marry Emily just to spite him. It was raining again the next day and my coop upgrade was finished. I needed to upgrade it one more time to be able to have rabbits though. So I really need to be chopping wood and planting trees more than anything. I need to take my grass mod out because I cannot for the life of me find my horse ever. At night, I ended up riding around town and gifting whoever I saw. We also got the petty cut scene where Pam comes home and gets all angry. That awkward moment when I was the one who literally just gave her a beer at the saloon. Not my business though. When I went to bed, I got level eight foraging. Good morning. It's day 66. After I did my farm stuff, I tried to go to Marnie's and buy a duck, but Shane was passed out drunk and I had to wake him up, I guess. Don't know why I have to do everything in this damn town. But regardless, we got the duck, named it Quackers, and were another step closer to getting a duck feather for our community center. What do I do for the rest of the day? I figured my combat level was pretty low, and I also wanna open up as many geode opportunities as possible for myself, so I guess it's mine time. And it paid off because I gained a combat level. The next few days, were pretty uneventful. I'm just trying to make as much money as possible, collect artifacts and minerals, and do whatever I need to do to complete the community center. We completed the artisan bundle and now we only need a pumpkin or either a large goat milk or wool to get the greenhouse. We got a mining level, but by far the coolest thing to happen was when the traveling cart came Friday. My girl brought me some wool. I know it's ridiculously expensive, but I'm getting it. It's going to be quite a long time before we get a large goat milk, so let's just get this animal bundle out of the way. I did also get inside Elliot's shack, and you know, I'm doing pretty good in the heart department. I really, really need to get my hearts up with Emily so I can buy the mermaid pendant soon. I think I'll probably end up marrying her. We have the highest hearts, and she's just so fun. I'm an Emily stan for sure. Hey, you know what day it is? Um, I, I woke up with my mutant speed grow pumpkin finally sprouted, so guess what? We finally completed the pantry and we will have a green house tomorrow. Best day of my life, oh my God. But guess what else? I have enough money to unlock the desert too. Fuck it, we ball. Tomorrow is gonna be huge. Day 70, baby, our greenhouse is fixed. Of course, I immediately jumped on getting my red cabbage and winter seeds planted. I got these seeds by throwing the winter roots I had left over from mining in the icy levels into the seed maker. Let's hope the first batch here has both the snow yam and the crocus. I also put deluxe speed grow on most of the seeds to be obnoxious. After I was done tending to my farm, I headed to the desert for the very first time. I wanted to start with catching the two desert fish, especially since one is a community center requirement. Easy. I also wanted to make sure I introduced myself to Sandy, dug up artifact spots and foraged, and tried out the skull cavern. Can't believe I'm here with a steel pick and only one backpack upgrade. I didn't make it very far, but my inventory was getting obnoxiously full, so I decided to head home and take care of that community center bundle. I'm trying to have a beautiful moment with the Junimos, but the game keeps screaming at me that my inventory is full. We know, we get it. Now we only have two more bundle categories left the craft room with winter foraging, and the bulletin board. We're just waiting on things to happen for the dye bundle. I need to figure out how to get the Nautilus shell sooner than winter. We need to get a rabbit for the enchanters bundle, and our fruit trees are growing for the rest. I woke up on day 71 with just enough money for a coop upgrade, which I need to do to get a rabbit's foot since the traveling cart hates me. On my way to upgrade the coop, Willie gave me a pan that I probably won't ever use. Truthfully, it is a good idea to carry it around though because you can get get Omni geodes from panning. And I also bought some seeds to replenish my crop fields. A new baby chicken hatched and I named it Scramble. There is a small chance that serpents can drop rabbit's foot in the skull cavern. So here I am. I got my ass absolutely handed to me though and died on like level two. Kind of a dub though, cause I didn't lose anything. So I spent the rest of the night giving gifts and participating in heart events. Today is the Stardew Valley Fair, which I absolutely have to attend because I need the star drop. It costs 2000 tokens. I used a calculator I found online to ensure I would win the Grange display and get a thousand tokens. And since it worked out so well for me last time, I figured I would go all in on green again. I'm not sure if green still has increased odds, but let's hope and pray. Ah, uh, no. Okay. 
Never mind. I'll just play this fishing mini game until I can bet it all again. I win a thousand in a second time and one baby. That's star drop two out of seven for ya. But I didn't have enough for the fedora, so I went back a third time and Let's just say, I have my fedora, ladies. We also maxed out our farming skill today. Hell yeah. Despite my efforts to complete the community center as soon as possible, the only thing that's killing the mood is the Nautilus shell, which is a winter beach forageable. Demetrius will apparently send you one randomly, so I'm gonna focus on getting my hearts up with him and Emily and Haley, since they're the best marriage candidates at this point. I spent some time in the desert mines today. I really need to upgrade my pickaxe though, because this is ridiculous. But do you remember when I mentioned that sometimes the flying dragon thing drops rabbit's foot? Well, um... I got one. I don't even have good luck today, so hell yeah. That's going straight to the community center. And now I don't necessarily have to spend money on rabbits either. I did get a dino level, no egg, but I got a tibia, so that's another artifact down. I just I just can't like help but laugh because there's literally no way I'm getting that star drop. This is the first time I've like actively tried to get artifacts and to get geodes and everything, and I am flopping so hard. It's kind of frustrating, not gonna lie. Evelyn stopped by to gift me the garden pot this morning and my coop is fully upgraded now. Hindsight is a bitch though. I wish I would have upgraded the barn sooner. If only I knew I would get a rabbit's foot as a monster drop instead of having to actually get one myself. But it's fine. No time for pegs to be profitable before the end of the year anyways. Maybe in the 200 days video. Today I decided to not go to the desert and instead do some little chores around the valley. We donated our rabbit's foot, bought some cooking supplies, Gave our pickaxe over for upgrade because, oh boy, do I need that. Blessed Gunther with our tibia and gifted people that I normally don't gift to a lot. By the time I got done with that, it was super late, so I did a little beach foraging and artifact hunting, but obviously no luck. On day 75, three quarters of the way through this challenge, we woke up to a glorious sight. Our winter forageables came in. That completes the last bundle in the crafts room. I am so, so thankful it's finally over. Unlocking the quarry will be helpful too for possibly collecting more geodes and getting minerals. Traveling cart didn't have shit and I'm still waiting on my golden ax upgrade. So I spent the day fishing with a treasure bobber to hopefully score some artifacts and geodes and got a Haley heart event when I went to the beach. I secretly hope that I can marry her because she is best girl, but honestly, Emily's cool too. I'm not upset. I did say hi and give some gifts in the salon because it is always popping on a Friday night and spent the rest of the night fishing for artifacts. I got the Nautilus shell fossil. God, what a tease. No letter from Demetrius today, but my red cabbage did come in, so heck yeah. We picked up my golden pickaxe, donated the Nautilus fossil to the museum, crafted a bunch of mega bombs, and headed straight for the quarry. Oh god, that's an iridium node. It can drop a prismatic shard. Okay, well, never mind. We'll get him next time. I cleared the quarry and got the golden scythe inside of this cavern thing. After pretty much blowing everything up, I had a pretty good amount of geodes to break open tomorrow. After hours, I had energy left over, so I went fishing and got an artifact. Today is a rainy day. I really, really want to try to get a mermaid pendant. After I tended to my animals, I ran over to the traveling cart and then straight to give Emily and Haley gifts. And together we thank the Lord for bumping up our hearts with Emily to eight. I ran over to Pierre's to get a bouquet, awkwardly got an Abigail heart event, um, anyways. Bought the bouquet, ran back to Emily's to give it to her, and rode to the beach to buy the mermaid pendant. Huh? Can I really not give a bouquet and get a pendant on the same day? Oh my god, wait. <gasps> I terribly misjudged this. This is probably my biggest mistake I made during this challenge. I have to reach 10 hearts with someone before I can buy the mermaid pendant, and that might be totally impossible. How I didn't know that, I don't really have an answer. For some reason, I really thought it was eight. And then since I skipped out on pigs, it'll be really hard to craft a rain totem. Oh my God. Not all hope is lost, but it might be. That was terrible 
judgment on my part and it might screw us out of a star drop. I decided to take my frustration out on the skull cavern and made it all the way down to level 41 with the help of my lucky lunch. Oh, I just can't even believe I did that. I woke up to 10k gold in my mailbox from Mr. Key that was from reaching level 25 in the skull cavern, but ultimately I know it's time to get serious. I need to do lots of skull cavern runs and increase my chances of getting artifacts, minerals, and the prismatic shard. I need to fish, mine, fight, and get creative here. One way to get a prismatic shard is to place rainbow trout in a fish pond. Luckily, I saved a rainbow trout for this purpose and will try to breed them as quickly as possible. There's also a chance to get treasure rooms in the skull cavern that can potentially house rain totems and prismatic shards. We need to increase our luck and be doing skull caverns like mad. And I'm hoping to get the ancient seed by fishing. Ugh, we'll see. If we can get a rain totem, we can use it to get the mermaid pendant guy back to the valley and get married too. I'm going to try to remain optimistic. I did die in the skull cavern tonight, but I didn't lose anything important. <sighs> It's a struggle out here. I finished out the day at the beach with my treasure bobber and I got another dino egg. So we'll be incubating that for sure. On day 79, Stardew Valley really threw us a bone. I just about cried when I saw Demetrius sent us the Nautilus shell in the mail, allowing us to complete his bundle in the community center. Our sweet gem berry also came in and we are now at a three out of seven total star drops. We also have three apples and a pot pomegranate, so we were able to complete those bundles as well. Now, we're just waiting on that damn duck feather. We have one duck right now, one that just hatched, and another in my incubator, so you bitches better get to work. I spent the evening in the skull cavern, and I got my first treasure room. Unfortunately, it wasn't a prismatic shard or rain totems, but that's okay. We still have some time. I was just doing my thing, and then I don't even know what to say. I killed a serpent, and it dropped a prismatic shard, and I got a dinosaur or egg too. Okay. But holy shit, I have to leave and give this to Gunther first thing in the morning. I have to give him my first one because of my museum completion star drop. I really wish I could get the galaxy sword, but I really don't want to push my luck. We got 20 days left. When I woke up, my fish pond was all built, so I tossed that rainbow trout in and obviously gave the prismatic shard to Gunther. I decided to check the quarry and chop some wood because I need more for crafting my tea saplings. I harvested whatever random seeds I put in that greenhouse, fished until my treasure tackle wore out, no artifacts, by the way, and went to the mines to farm artifacts. I only got one and I already had it before heading home. No duck feather still on day 81. I guess I misjudged how long it would take to get one. I feel like we've had a duck for a long time, but we do have a few more days before the end of fall, so hopefully we'll get one before then just to reach my own goal of doing the community center before fall. I really should have bought that duck feather from the traveling cart. I wanted to go to the desert and mine, but I didn't last very long because I died on an infested area by accident. So I stayed on my side of town and fished with the treasure bobber. I also got a shed going before Robin closed up shop because Screw it, honestly, why not? Day 82, it was raining. But even after talking to Emily every day and making sure to give her two of her favorite gifts, I'm still only at eight hearts. And so I can't get the mermaid pendant. No duck feather either. And it isn't available in the traveling cart today. <sighs> it's looking bleak, y'all. I got nothing from the geodes I broke open. And when I went to the desert, I forgot all my bombs. But I did my best to make it a couple floors. I swear, I... I never get anything from artifact spots, like actual artifacts wise. I say this and while I was looking for spots on the beach, I got the anchor, so that's cool. When I went to bed, I gained a mining level, so not all bad today. All right, second to last day of fall, moment of truth. Oh. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're now done with the community center. I could cry. I'm so happy. It obviously happened way later than I intended it to, but all I can do is be grateful it was done at all. Now, what I gotta do is take this feather over and you are fucking joking. There's a saying 
that holds a lot of power over me in this 100 days playthrough. And that's everything that can go wrong will. Fuck, okay. You know what? We tried, guys. <laughs> I went to the desert and mined until the Spirits Eve Fest, where I talked to everyone and got the golden pumpkin before heading to bed. I didn't realize this till I was editing, but I totally could have gone to the community center after the Spirits Eve Festival, huh? I'd never even considered that in my whole life, but I'm pretty sure that you can do that. So the more you know, don't make them same mistake that I did. It doesn't affect it that much, but it would have been nice to have it one day sooner, right? The last day of fall. Before I went to the community center, I check on all my farm stuff and made sure we harvested everything before winter comes. And then I went to the traveling cart, purchased the backpack upgrade, completed the community center finally, donated to Gunther, and went to the Skull Cavern to take advantage of this good luck day. Floor 27 was a treasure floor. Unfortunately, not with any rain totems. And then floor 39 was another treasure room with more cactus seeds. Okay, what the fuck is going on? The next treasure room had a purple slime egg. Now, now, I'm gonna be honest, I've literally never used the slime hutches in this game ever. I need to look into this and see if it's something worth pursuing for the next 15 days. But the very end of fall has also brought us level 9 foraging, which allows us to craft the rain totem that needs truffle oil that I will never get, unless maybe the traveling cart, who knows? Welcome to winter. We have 15 days left of this challenge. I really don't know what we will be able to accomplish from this point on, but let's just do our best. Since we completed the community center, bundle, we had a flurry of cutscenes from Jody and Gus. Jody invited us to dinner and Gus gave us a mini jukebox and stirred his marinara. We had a new duck come in, got everything all ready for when Willie invites us up to fix his ginger island boat, and triggered the dark talisman wizard quest. The only thing is, we don't even have the sewers unlocked yet, which is so unbelievably frustrating. I feel like it's normally pretty easy to unlock the sewer by this time, but I'm just convinced I'm having the worst luck with artifacts and minerals. Maybe it's because I'm actually trying to get them or something, I don't know. I went to the desert to trade in some artifact troves and get some star fruit seeds to fill up my greenhouse with. Cracked open the artifact troves, which had a few good things in there. Not enough, but okay. Spied on Lewis and Marnie and went fishing to end the night. I caught the squid, the perch, and attempted the glacier fish, but I probably need to come back with a different bobber. On day 86, I finally got the letter from Willie to come repair his boat. I also got a buttload of recipes naturally after my hearts just went up with everyone due to the community center repair. I got everything prepped to head to Ginger Island tomorrow and contributed everything we needed to repair the boat. I'll be using a couple of Ginger Island walnut guides from YouTube. I need to get enough walnuts to at least unlock Pirate's Cove, but also I'm not going for the walnut room like I initially planned, so I just need to get to Pirate's Cove. Before I left the beach, I replenished my crab pots. Willie showed me his crab infestation and gave out a ton of gifts since I will be preoccupied with Ginger Island for most of the week. I ended the night by chopping some trees. Robin and Willie fixed the boat overnight and once I woke up I ran to go trigger the quest that gives you the magnifying glass. I totally forgot about this so I wanted to get it done before heading to Ginger Island for the very first time. Once 8 a.m. came I was off. How exciting is this? I collected three walnuts from the right side, met Leo, of course, and went straight up towards the volcano. I grabbed any walnuts that I had access to on the way. I didn't actually enter the combat area of the volcano. Honestly, I wish I had a better weapon, but we'll see what we can do without going in for now. We did get two walnuts on the left side of the entrance. After that, I unlocked the left side of the island where the farm is and went to town on the Muscle Rocks. I got one walnut from there. Nice. I kept on collecting and even did the music room walnuts. I had to watch back my recording for the last set of notes to complete it. I'm literally, I'm not musically inclined at all. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know? I got three walnuts there, collected a few more, and used 20 walnuts to make the birds build me a hut. It's very spacious. I love it. I contemplated using the 20 walnuts to just unlock the pirate's cove right away, but I don't know. I might have misstepped here. I, I decided that having the hut was more worth it. And I really don't think it'll be hard to get the 20 walnuts before the end of the 100 days. I'm planting my melons for the frogman. I did forget all of the chest items I stowed away by Willie's hut in my excitement to come here. So I'll start everything else tomorrow. For now, I'm gonna work on some ginger island fish. I did get the lionfish, a few walnuts, and a secret note. I also ran over and caught the blue discus before heading to bed for the night. I woke up on ginger island 
Island on day 88. Not sure exactly what to do. I need to go back to Pelican Town at some point, but I figured I would try to see if I can get any walnuts for as long as I can last in the volcano. I ended up going the distance and doing all 10 levels and making it to the tippy top. That's kind of neat. There were quite a few walnuts up top, a prismatic shard that I had no idea about. Like, okay. And I got a ton of walnuts inside the volcano. I'll probably use this prismatic shard to get the galaxy sword, to be honest. I've really been struggling with combat and would love a better weapon. I woke up on Ginger Island again. Unfortunately, no rain, but I really think I can get some nuts today. I decided to head back to the valley for a bit to catch up on some things and grab a few items that will help me on this Ginger Island excursion. I know I'm not gonna get into Key's Walnut Room anytime soon, but I wanna make sure I just get at least enough walnuts to unlock the beach resort and gain access to Pirate's Cove because the Stingray, obviously. The Stingray is only available there and I need to catch every fish in the game. But then I remember that I somehow need to get a rain totem to marry Emily and I have a traveling car. Ugh. I guess what I can do is take care of my farm, run to the traveling cart, sail back to Ginger Island, replant melon with deluxe speed grow and wheat, run to the desert, do an artifact check, get the galaxy sword, do a quick skull cavern run and come home and sleep because I obviously ran out of time. 10 days left. What the hell is even happening at this point? This is definitely the most stressed I've been playing Stardew. Um, it's kind of fun though. I'm not like a speedrunner by any means, so this is a fun experiment for me, but oh my god, there's just too much decision making. One of my big decisions today was whether or not I would trade in those Omni Geodes for artifact troves. And honestly, I'm just so done at this point. I have broken open so many fucking Geodes, so many artifact troves, been actively searching for artifact spots every single day in the mines everywhere, bombing things. Like, can I get a break, please? I decided to crack open the Omni Geodes instead of trading them in, and I got a few minerals out of it. Honestly, what is happening? <laughs> What the hell? I think tomorrow I'll be able to enter the sewers for the first time. Let's hope, let's pray. I finally triggered Robin's six heart event so that I can now make the flute in drum blocks. We can use the flute blocks to get some walnuts on Ginger Island if it happens to rain, which by the way, I like already forgot about Ginger Island. So I tried to go over there today too, but I lost track of time and didn't make it before Willie left his shop. So instead I gave gifts to my villagers and chopped a bunch of trees to hopefully raise our foraging levels soon. Finally. On day 91, we finally unlocked the sewer and we can meet our friend Krobus. He informed me that the dark talisman the wizard needs is in the mutant bug layer, so I grabbed it and fished for the slime jack. And while I was in the sewer, I also caught the mutant carp, my second to last legendary fish. Once I got that, I ran up to the witch's lair and while I can't enter and complete the quest at the moment, I can fish for the void salmon that is only available here. I did all of that and and then sailed back to Ginger Island for the night. I had one journal page that indicated where a golden walnut was. And when I shook a tree, I got a golden coconut. We also took care of some various tacks to help get our walnut count up. My tangible walnut count is at 19. So we just need one more. I think I also have 50 total walnuts, I believe. So yeah, we're definitely not getting in that walnut room. It was just a pipe dream. I woke up on Ginger Island on day 92, but alas, no rain again. I wish I had a TV here to check the weather. Other, but I'm going to head back to the valley to break open this golden coconut with Clint until I realized it's another festival day. Why? Does this keep happening to me? This was the first time I decided to just reset the day. Just because I'd rather stay on Ginger Island and do my thing instead of go to the Festival of Ice. Uh, wh what, are, what are we gonna do? We're gonna all gather and do ice fishing? Like, ugh, that sounds so fucking boring. I'm super glad I stayed on Ginger Island because as I was cleaning up my farm, I got secret note number six, which led me straight to my 20th walnut. This allowed me to unlock the Pirate's Cove and the little vacation spot, which I had never done before. So this was all brand new to me. I immediately started fishing for the stingray until I realized that I was fishing in the totally wrong place. 
I had to go to the actual Pirate's Cove and wow, this is so, so, so cool. I'm obsessed with Ginger Island now, guys. But anyways, I got the Stingray and continued to clear my farm before heading back to my real farm. I'm also wondering if anyone knows, is there a higher chance to get geodes on Ginger Island? I swear I've gotten way more here than like anywhere else in the valley. Eventually, I sailed back to my farm, took care of some animal and greenhouse stuff, and then spent the rest of the day in the mines bombing the place up. We raised a combat level in our sleep. Hopefully. Hopefully we can max our skills by day 100. Before I went to the desert on day 93, I did various chores around the farm and set up more preserves jars. I don't have enough oak resin to make more kegs, but these jellies will help us earn a little more money. So much for being a millionaire, huh? I did head to the desert, and even though luck isn't technically on my side, I got a golden relic artifact. I actually had a pretty good haul and got decently far for not having super luck, and once it was late enough, I rode back to the valley. And then finally, Finally, we got level 10 mining and of course chose the profession that gives us double the chance of finding geodes. We needed this so desperately. There might be hope still. Today was pretty similar to yesterday. I did some foraging before heading over to the Skull Cavern again. Before I went to catch the bus, I made sure to give Emily a gift and then where the fuck is Pam? <laughs> I've been trying to figure out what's going on and guys, I think she went to the resort on Ginger Island. What is my luck? I never bought the warp totem recipe from the desert trader because you need 10 iridium bars to craft it. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to be pumping out iridium bars like that within a hundred days. I'm not going to bother checking because there's no reason for me to, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened and I'm incredibly annoyed. I didn't want the day to go to waste, however, so I blew up the mines for a bit. I did get the note that said someone is waiting for you on level 100, which is spooky. Don't know if we can get to level 100 in the Skull Cavern in this 100 days if I can't go there. Anyways, when we went to bed, our cow gave birth. We named the new baby cow Chaco. Let's hope Pam shows up for fucking work today because I need to go to the desert as much as possible. Before that, I brought the bear his maple syrup in the secret woods. I love his portrait so much. It's so much fun. And then, lo and behold, it's a miracle. Pam is at the bus stop. Let's get to work. We didn't make it very far. I suspect I didn't have very good luck again, but I never checked it. Having the double geode profession is amazing. I got nearly 30 geodes in one day. And if I had more bombs, I probably would have gotten more. I traded them in for artifact troves and went home super happy. Day 96 landed on a Friday and it happened to be a good luck day. After restoring the community center, Clint goes there on Fridays, so I can't break open the geodes and artifact troves I have at the moment. In the morning, I checked our traveling cart and bought our fourth star drop from Krobus for 20,000 gold. The mines treated us super well today. We got one treasure floor, no rain totems, unfortunately, and with three days left, I, I think it's time to give up the gun. But let's go day 97. I spent most of the day running around and giving gifts to the townies and even reached 10 hearts with Emily. I did skip her fashion show heart event though, sorry. I'm so over the events at this point. I broke open a bunch of geodes and all of my artifact troves, and we finally got some good stuff. I also broke open a few omni geodes because my mineral collection is pretty abysmal, but it honestly wasn't worth it. I didn't break all of them because out of the 15 I did break, only one mineral was able to be donated. <sighs> I spent the rest of the day in the skull cavern. The spirits were in good humor and it definitely showed. We did get a treasure level and it's a... Uh... Okay. And I got a ton of geodes, obviously, but here's the kicker. Another prismati. It was a pretty great run. I'm hoping to get a lot out of these artifact troves. I wanted to take care of some farmer duties today and do a bit of fishing. Besides the night market fish that we'll get to tomorrow, the glacier fish and lingcod are the only ones I have left. It literally only took me like an hour to do both of them. Okay. So tomorrow we'll be getting the last of our fish, hopefully. After I got those two fishies, I broke open all of my geodes and artifact troves. The geodes were kind of a dud, but the artifact troves were, let's just say, epic? Yeah, guys. I got the ancient seed. It's my first time getting it in year one. I can't even believe it. Super fucking cool, obviously. And even though we're nowhere near close to completing the museum collection as a whole, I'm excited about that. I decided to spend the rest of the night in the Skull Cavern because I really need to train combat. And I was wondering why things were not working out well for me in these combat scenarios when I realized 
I brought the wrong sword. So we'll see. I'm just trying to do my best not to die out here. And then I did. We gave it our best shot, guys. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't lose anything cool. I guess the sword, but fuck that sword anyways. I don't need it. And now it is the 15th of winter, first day of the night market. I woke up to a letter from Emily inviting me to go camping, and you know I'll have to be there. Hopefully, the night market fishing doesn't take too long tonight. I had a bunch of star fruit grow in. I wish I could turn all of these into wine, but I need to sell them to get as much money as possible for my millionaire goal. I'm gonna let you know right now we're not even close. I made a bunch of tea saplings and figured on the last day I would plan to sell a ton of extra stuff I have lying around just to see how close we can get. I probably should have gotten more animals. I'm I'm a mess. I was looking through my artifacts and secret notes and noticed there was an artifact I could find with secret note number 17. So I swiped that real quick before heading to the Skull Cavern for a few hours just to farm combat. And I got to the night market just after five. I immediately rushed over to the little submarine guy and one after another caught the blobfish the spook fish and boom baby midnight squid yeah i'm a master angler no biggie. Afterwards, I just did various night market things, completed the mermaid show song, and met Emily in the secret woods after 10 p.m. I don't care if we're not married yet. She's just so wifey. She really is one of my favorite marriage candidates. Day 100. Wow, guys, this was it. I can't believe we're here. I woke up to Willie's star drop in the mail, ending our run with five out of seven star drops. I'm a little sad, yeah, but now I know what to do next time I try this kind of playthrough. I decided to sell as much as I was comfortable parting with since I'm only halfway to our millionaire goal. I've chopped pretty much every tree on my farm, but I'm just gonna keep chopping until it's time to go to the Skull Cavern and farm combat again. Those are my only two skills that are still at level nine, so I'm hoping that me slowly chipping away at them day by day is going to pay off tonight. I love that I like completely ignored this fish pond the second I got a prismatic shard. And I've been hoarding massive wealth because the things I would normally spend money on aren't helpful for my challenge. It'll come in handy though if we do a 200 days video. Before I go to the desert, I want to crack open these geodes while the blacksmith is still open just to see if we... Never mind. I hate the ginger island thing. I should have never opened that resort. I focused on killing as many monsters as possible in the mines and decided to just pass out there so I could get as many of them as possible. Unfortunately, we did not gain any levels in our sleep. So, how did we do? Well, let's go goal by goal. We did complete the community center within our 100 days. Big success there. It could have been sooner with better planning, but you know. We did not make 1 million gold not even close. I've done 1 million within year one before, so I don't really know what I did wrong here. I think I might have dropped the ball on crafting kegs and being strategic with getting the supplies to do that. I also could have focused a lot more on animals. How did we do on our star drops? Well, we got five out of the seven total star drops. It sucks we didn't get all of them, um, but I for sure thought we could have gotten six out of seven. The ones we got came from level 100 in the mines, old master cannoli in the secret Woods, the Stardew Valley Fair, Krobus's shop, and from catching every fish in the game. I truly thought we would have gotten the marriage star drop from getting max hearts with our spouse, but I did not give Emily nearly enough attention to make that happen. And I totally did not plan on obtaining the mermaid pendant correctly at all. I thought you could buy it at eight hearts, but oh no, it was 10. If I hadn't screwed that up, I really think we could have gotten the star drop. We also missed the museum star drop, which I kind of expected would happen. It's so difficult to get every single museum item in 100 days. Anyone who does it is a serious superhuman, and I envy them. I am most proud of getting every single fish within the first 100 days. That was a scramble. From level 10 fishing with the legend in spring, all the way to having to unlock a bunch of shit on Ginger Island. Like, that was a lot. That was mind-blowing. I can't believe I did that. I genuinely do agree with you before you caught my head. <laughs> I do agree with you, okay? that I could have done a little bit better. But like I said, I am not a pro. I don't really speed run games ever. So I think I did pretty good. What do you guys think? There was definitely some huge blunders, some huge missteps. But what's a girl to do? I can't go back in time and change it. I just kind of had to roll with the punches. But hey, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Squarespace. I hope you enjoyed this video. I loved making it because obviously I love any chance that I get to play Stardew Valley. If you'd like to see a 200 days, I mean, 
hit my line down below. If you liked this video, I don't know what video you would like. Um, you know what? I'll just put one up. Hey, make sure you go check that one out. It's probably very good. I hope you're having a great day and you continue to do so and I will see you in the next one.